And I think that's all we need to do in setup. Okay, so if you remember our flowchart, the first thing we need to do in loop is check to see if there are any bytes of data in the serial buffer. If not, we just keep checking until we get a byte. We're going to use the available function coupled with an if statement. So here we go. Again, we'll use a byte data type for this because we don't expect it to go above 255. And the original author named it something like in byte and also use an integer. But I think user input describes what we're doing here better. So that's what I'm going to call it. And by the way, I'll post a link to the original sketch so you can compare if you'd like. Next, we need to match the user input with one of the cases in the switch case statement so we can do something different depending on the character of the user types. So we're going to get into our switch case statement for this. And user input will be our test variable. Now, before I write the rest of the cases, I want to point something out. Notice the single quotes around the letter A. This tells the compiler to get the ASCII value for the character. For example, lowercase a has an ASCII value of 97 and lowercase b is 98. If I leave the quotes off and just type the letter a, I'll get an error. So let's just demonstrate here. And we're going to verify it. Okay, and here we see we get an error that a was not declared in this scope because the compiler thinks that it is a variable. Let's put the quotes back and try again. Okay, and we can see it work. So the compiler was complaining because it thought A was a variable and we never declared it. However, I can use numbers like 1, 2, etc. and just demonstrate that. We'll do that. And that would work fine. Okay, so this obviously is meaningless in the context of this program, so I'm going to put A back. But we can see that numbers are fine. If we're going to use characters, we have to put them in quotes. No, we don't need quotes for numbers because a number isn't a variable. It's just a, a number. And the quotes tell the compiler again to look for the ASCII representation of that character. So when I type A in there, that's going to tell the sketch that I want to light the first LED. So let's finish building our switch case. Okay, all done. So we have a few different things that can happen depending on what the user types. If the user types any of the letters A through E, one of the LEDs will turn on. But if they want all of them on, then the user types F. And of course, we use the default case to turn them all off by typing any other character. So let's give this thing a shot. Let me open this serial monitor. And so when I type a lowercase a, we see the first LED comes on. And now if I type B, the second one comes on. So what happens if I type like, I don't know, like W or something? Well, they go off. Well, we can see since W isn't one of our predefined cases, it drops into the default case and turns them all off. Okay, let's try to turn them all on by sending an F. Okay, cool. They all come on as we would expect. Let's turn them off again. I'll type an H. You know, maybe we could turn like two on at once or something. Let's try that. I'll type A and B and send it. Okay, so we were able to turn on the first and second LED by sending both an A and B at the same time. But, you know, did they really light up at exactly the same time? So each time I send something, it goes through this loop. It has to first look for a character. And notice we had two characters in the serial buffer. And remember, when it reads one out, they all shift down, right? So the second character becomes the first. So it has to compare everything to the switch case, 
find the appropriate one, light the LED, and then come back into the loop for the second character. So technically, they didn't really come on both at the same time. It just goes through the loop really, really fast. So it looks like they come on at the same time. But if, you know, I were to film this and, and slow my camera down really slow, you would see that they actually come on at different times. So, you know what would be nice though? If we could turn on a specific LED, or that the user typed a lowercase or uppercase letter. You know, just in case they had one too many or something, I forgot to turn the caps lock key off. So, what can we do to make that happen here? Well, all we need to do is add one line of code for each letter. So, we're just going to do that for the letter A so you can see what I mean. And I made that one little change here. So now when we send a lowercase or uppercase A, the first LED is going to light regardless. So let's go ahead and upload it. Okay, and we could see that that worked and we could, you know, we could actually put a third character. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be the letter A, but we're just going to stick with this right now. And I'm going to open the serial monitor again. And I'm going to type an uppercase A this time. And, of course, the LED lights. Well, you know, that's pretty cool. So, by now, it should be coming more apparent about how you could use the Arduino to control our world and do some pretty cool things. It just should give you a lot to think about. And, and this really is just a tip of the iceberg. This is still a relatively simple program, even though it's probably the most or is the most complex one we've written so far. So, that wraps up this lesson, and I'll see you in the next.